I'm in the galley on the Alaska Gypsy. Need to do some welding on the outside of the hull. This is the interior and I need to remove the plywood so I can get it the foam so I can remove the foam before I do the welding. Um, so here's my situation. I think I'm going to cut this um, sheet of plywood right here. It looks like it's got a seam right there. I can't really tell for sure but I think there's a seam running down there. And this is the edge of the seam, so I'm hoping if I cut it across there, then I can pull this whole panel off. I'm going to use this Milwaukee oscillating tool. I'm going to try and do a nice straight cut, as straight as I can, so that I can reuse this piece of plywood um, without having it look too bad. So, uh, wish me luck. It's kind of hard to do a nice straight cut with these things, but I'm going to do my best and see if we can get this piece of plywood off. Got the plywood out of the way. The cut across here went well. I didn't mention I obviously have these uh, wires that are kind of an issue. Had to make sure not to plunge the blade in too deep on the oscillating tool to nick or worse cut the wires so that went fine just barely cut through I knew these ones were a little bit loose so they weren't super vulnerable to getting cut um, main struggle I had was probably there's a little bit of glue down here it looks like the plywood was glued down here one screw I hadn't seen luckily there wasn't any screws along this edge because that's actually a metal um, angle iron so no screws there, made that easy. It was just screwed along this edge to the wood blocking and this edge. So here we go. Now it's time to get some foam out of the way so I can unbolt this blocking strip here and take that out. Excavate the foam down to the chine and then excavate up along the seam. the board whatever this thing is called I call it like a stringer or a block I guess blocking so it is for securing the plywood when they built the hull and it's out of there and now we got the um, foam is mostly removed you can see the chine right there that round stock runs all the way along the length of the boat at the chine corner and Back in there under the channel stiffener, there's the tab for the blocking. And right here, you can see that seam that I need to weld right there. It's just the start of it. So that's a seam, one plate, another plate of quarter inch steel above the chine. And this one is significantly corroded on the outside. So I'll take you out there and we can look at it. But. Okay, so there's our vertical seam. And remember I had about six inches I could go to this side. That looks about perfect. And then I had 20 inches of space over here. So it's not quite gonna get me all the way to that spot. We'll go back inside and remove more foam. Well, I've learned some crazy things about this foam here in the shipyard. Um, it's extremely toxic when it melts, especially when it burns. And one of the crazy things about it is that it releases, I mean, figures this stuff is not good for your body to breathe, right? Kind of don't really need the internet nannies to tell you about that. It's kind of obvious burning some crazy foam petrochemical. But here's one that surprised even me was the gases that come off of the foam when it burns, which it doesn't really burn because it's, a fire retardant built into it, which is a whole nother level of hazard, actually. Turns out something that, like this, that's fire retardant is its own subset of nasty chemicals that you don't want. But it's not just dangerous for your body. This is the thing I learned about. It's actually corrosive to your boat, especially to copper wiring and 
even potentially, well, to coatings. Epoxies are more resistant to it, is what I've learned. But uh, enamels and uh, other type of coatings are not nearly as resistant. So it uh, the smoke creates a soot, which is kind of obvious, a black soot that collects on things. And that soot is, I believe it was high in corrosive acids. And those acids sit there on the material and they attract uh, moisture and they um, enhance or speed up all kinds of different chemical breakdown and corrosion. And I don't want any of this foam corrosive uh, health risk stuff in the cabin. Um, so I'm really being diligent to remove even wire brushing the areas that I'm going to weld to get as much away as possible so that I don't end up trapping a bunch of corrosive gases on my steel hull and have it rot from the inside out, oh, which is kind of the irony of the thing. Um, and maybe I'm being overly careful, but figure a better little excessive caution at this stage. We're hoping to live on this boat for a long time, and I don't want to tear it apart again like this if I can avoid it. So, No, no indication whatsoever of the electrolysis in here. And that's kind of the interesting thing about this electrolysis is basically everything is looking fantastic on the inside for a steel boat that's now uh, over 30 years old. But the electrolysis, electrical currents working on the steel in the harbor was just dissolving this metal out into the um, water. I'm no expert on it, but I'm becoming an expert slowly one hour at a time on repair. So I'll clean up that outside and weld. I got six inches of clearing that way, 21 inches that way. You might see that I'm not removing a huge amount of foam. Um, it's because I'm not putting a tremendous amount of heat into my weld. I'm keeping a good eye on it. And um, I'll be using a infrared thermometer now to check my inside steel temperatures to try and keep the metal that's in contact with the foam below 120 degrees Celsius. 120 degrees Celsius is the magic number where this foam tends to want to start melting. And when it starts to melt, it starts to release the toxins that you don't want in your body or on your boat or anywhere near anything, to be honest. So that's what we'll try and avoid. Here's our spot on the outside. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mark 21 inches this way takes me to right there and then I had six inches this way gets me to right there so that's perfect over here I got just a little bit of welding to do beyond that framework there's a vertical piece of channel right there so but pretty good this is the really the worst spot is in here I got a little bit of splash zone in there from when we were on the um, grid in Ketchikan. It's just a spot that looked concerningly thin. And for our journey up here to Wrangell, I put a little splash zone in some of the worst spots. It's sort of a stop gap. Um, so there we go. We're ready to start welding. Can burn that one in. I gotta clean that splash zone out. And uh, it's gonna be pretty easy actually. Weather's decent, should have this welded up today, no problem. Been done here and just gonna give you a little status update so here's the area that we've been working on there's that vertical seam we're not finished but have at least one pass everywhere in here uh, 60 11 using 330 seconds for my root pass to keep the heat down and there's a uh, 6011 8th inch pass, which 
it isn't quite enough to totally fill it up unfortunately it's still got a little bit of undercut in there not quite filled in but it's, it's getting close I'll give you an angle there and down here it's kind of a mess you know I had a really deep <clears throat> um, deep corrosion in this area and I've done a few passes in there this one lower pass is just on the chine itself just to build that back up and then I have I think two I got one pass down deep inside there, just thickening the really thin steel. And then I've got another pass tying into the plate above. Uh, and I'll do probably two or three more passes. The next one looks like I might be able to come right in the, the deepest groove there. And on the bottom is kind of the same thing. There wasn't quite as much to work on down there. And the steel is heavier, so it's a little easier. But this one over here is pretty easy, not very deep. so coming along quite well I'm letting it all cool down for a while now I have my little radio Audrey's inside with the infrared gun we're really getting a lot of data now on this process trying to keep the metal with the foam below 120 degrees um, now we have radios and infrared temperature sensors it's not too much to figure it all out and uh, keep from off gassing that toxic foam and um, doing a good job welding keeping the balance between enough heat and penetration and not so much that we're going to release the corrosive gases into our bodies and all over the boat balancing act let's go see how it's looking inside oh here it is Obviously, we've blackened some paint, as to be expected. Here's the little temperature sensor. It's getting pretty cool out there now, 50 Celsius. And that big chine cools down pretty well. Uh, so, good temperatures, 53. Right there on that weld, I just did this weld. It's already down to 50 pretty even across there that's quarter inch plate 41 30 how are we doing up here 30 so have a little bit more welding to do down there it's about 50 degrees so that's pretty good 120 is the number I don't want up by the foam wasn't much going on down there so I'd say all in all it's looking quite good let things cool off for another couple minutes. Here's our suction, sucking the air out through the exhaust fan. That's working good. Odor's not real bad in here. Let's see. We've got our system pretty well developed. Got a spray bottle standing by for a little miniature cool off. And then over in the sink, we have a full blown oop, garden hose ready to go if things really got out of hand. We should be able to extinguish it pretty quick if we're there and paying attention. Here's our fire watch officer. Hi. Social media manager, YouTube publisher. Making more shorts for you. <laughs> Here's her face mask. Here's what her day job looks like. <laughs> Cut. I'm just about done with you no know, welding in this area here on the chine and it really looks pretty terrible, I'd say. This is some real garbage looking weld in here. Um, my excuse for that is uh, it takes so many little passes and the base is so uneven. I would love to just run a big, fat, hot bead of 7018 to cap all this stuff nice and smooth, but uh, I don't want to deal with the fire hazard, the heat buildup of that and also it's not super clean either so sticking with this 600 series rod or 6000 6010 and 6011 this is looking a little better up here nicer puddles fewer passes that was just one pretty nicely prepped <laughs> groove actually and so i was able to do just kind of three passes this is pretty much just a cover pass to fill it in there 6011 eighth inch um, so about ready to grind it and sort of see where my high spots are, my low spots. Just have one little area that was a thin spot near the edge of my foam demo. 
I'm keeping it really cool over here, not wanting to build a lot of heat. So just putting some really small beads of 6011 in there, 330 seconds. So that's where we're at currently. A little grinding will show if I've really got any low spots, but got some significant electrolysis divots in here. So there's not any reason to really worry too much about getting it totally 100% full. Structurally, I feel good about it. And that's really what counts here at this stage. Uh, we're not looking for a mirror smooth paint job. We're looking for a boat that's seaworthy and isn't going to blow apart at the seams in heavy weather or in the ice or running into the ground. <laughs> Hopefully not. So here's a wrap. I'm going to finish off with a little grind and inspect and probably a little bit more weld, letting it cool down a little bit right now. But almost done for the day. The shipyard crews have gone home, end of their day. Boat owners get to keep working. Yeah. All right, that's the end of it for now. We've successfully filled the deep electrolysis gouging with weld. I was here to supervise the entire process and it's satisfactory for me, the owner of the vessel. So I guess that's all we really need. Um, no, it's good. The welding rod does very good. Nice clean puddle, good penetration. I really watch carefully when I'm doing it to make sure I'm getting a good tie in between the plating and the uh, chine, that's what we're really trying to achieve. And while it's not a beautiful <clears throat> new construction weld that I'm proud of to show off, it is uh, functional. It is a strong bond between these two. And also considering the fact that it's only one like two foot section on this entire side of the boat, it's not like a major stress point or anything that needs to be at new strength to be safe. So that's all for today. Sun is setting here in the shipyard and got other things to do before dark. Subscribe if you like this and you want more. I can't get enough. <laughs>